The new head of the International Air Transport Association, IATA, says he's shocked and disappointed at how poorly the EU has handled travel restrictions. Willie Walsh says Europe hasn't done enough to coordinate a way out of the pandemic. In his first broadcast exclusive interview, he tells me Brussels has missed a chance to prove its worth. I'm shocked at how disjointed the EU has been, particularly in a post-Brexit environment, when I think they had the opportunity to demonstrate to everybody that uh, there was incredible value in being part of the EU. It's disappointed me as a European to see how uncoordinated the activity has been. Now, Willie Wall says the risk is that there's no global coordination as flying picks up again. The picture is very different depending on where you're flying to and from. So, in the United States, we're through the worst of it, says Doug Parker at American Airlines. Domestic flights are coming back, and now the CEO says he's working on a US-UK travel corridor bridge or something along that. That comes as European aviation is struggling. The new list of the world's busiest airports today does not include a single European city in the top ten. The EU relies on international travel, which is heavily restricted. Domestic travel, of course, uh, as an intra-country, much smaller. And so in Asia, it's all about the domestic markets too. The world's busiest airport, Guangzhou in China, up from number 11 the year before. And that's the scenario as the Northern Hemisphere heads towards summer, when there had been so much hope that things were going to be a little bit better. Well, Willie Walsh has only been in IATA's job, top job for a few weeks. I spoke to him at his first interview as DG. He told me the problems facing the sector are truly unprecedented even now. The industry actually has gone through quite a massive challenge, unlike anything we've seen before. And we're now looking at forecasts of about $48 billion of losses in 2021. You know, which is a huge figure, but that's a big improvement on where we were last year. So it, it represents about uh, 23, 24 points of margin. And I think that's one good way of looking at it. And it clearly hasn't happened without really hard work by airlines around the world and very tough decisions by uh, airline management teams all across the industry. That said, do you still expect other airlines to go under. I mean, the requirement for more financing in 2021, both government and private sector, when airlines have already stumped up, do you see more going out? Well, I, I think those that have survived have a good chance of uh, seeing through 2021, but there will be challenges. You look at the uh, additional debt that the industry has taken on, about $220 billion of additional debt. So over $650 billion of debt on airline balance sheets. Uh, I think the challenge will come as we get into more international activities and airlines try to ramp up their flying uh, and match the uh, capacity that they're providing with the uh, demand that's likely to be there. And that's why we're saying governments need to give us you know, a warning and a plan as to how they're when and how they're going to open, because getting that right is going to be critical, because it could actually lead to an increase in cash burn by airlines if it's not done properly. The, the fear is, isn't it, that the reopening and the restarting is going to be as chaotic as the closure? Yeah, I think that is a challenge. You know, we've been, uh, I think, disappointed is probably a, a, an easy way of saying it at the way Governments have lacked coordination in the way they've gone about this. Uh, we really do need to see a coordinated approach. You know, we're looking at a global industry, and it's no good unless all parts of that industry are working in tandem. So uh, I think there is a risk that, uh, you know, will be, I don't think chaotic, but I think it will be disjointed. And it clearly would be better for everybody if it was more coordinated. Just looking at the moment, I mean, the US domestic is picking up. Yeah. Asia, intra-Asia is still dreadful. You've got isolated bubbles between Australia and New Zealand, but European aviation is 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 going to be. Yeah, it's difficult to see how it restarts. Yeah. So if if you look at it, and I, I think you've uh, highlighted an important difference between various segments around the world. The U.S. domestic market is about sixty six percent of their total market. So. Clearly, that hasn't suffered because there aren't restrictions or many restrictions on internal travel within the U.S. 
And talking to airline CEOs, they're, they're very optimistic actually about 2021 because they see strong demand and uh, particularly on the leisure side. Europe, uh, domestic travel is about 11% of the European industry. So they don't have a big domestic operation. It's really depending on international travel getting going again. And, and that's the big difference. Now, I think what you'll see is a, a few months difference between the recovery in the US and a recovery uh, when it starts in Europe. Um, but, you know, getting international travel moving again is very important. You know, I see the US carriers adding routes. Yeah. And doing it quite fast, actually, very much, even some international routes. I see Europe just basically having being stuck, not having direction of what they can expect so they can plan ahead. Yeah, I, I, yeah as a European and, and somebody who's always been proud to say, you know, I'm Irish and European, I'm shocked at how disjointed the EU has been, particularly in a post-Brexit environment when I think they had the opportunity to demonstrate to everybody that uh, there was incredible value in being part of the EU. It's disappointed me as a European to see how uncoordinated the activity has been, how every country has gone about this crisis pretty much on their own. Uh, that, that has been frustrating, disappointing, and I hope we see that addressed very quickly because you know, if you, if you look at Europe, the, the great successes of uh, Europe or the European project, if you want to call it that, has, has centered around freedom of movement, um, has centered around the ability for Europeans to go anywhere and work anywhere and to do it in a cheap and reasonable fashion. And that has been put at huge risk by what we've seen. So, you know, the want me to get into politics, I, I'm i really disappointed with uh, politics in in Europe uh, at the moment, and, and it needs to be addressed. There is an argument that will say, well, the airline industry got through last year, it's had huge amounts of public support, rightly so, but now the airline industry is fine. It's okay, it will slowly but surely rebuild itself bit by bit, and, it, and we, we don't need to worry. I think the industry will rebuild itself, um, but it will take time. And I, I think you would expect management teams and airlines to be more cautious as they start to rebuild. I don't see networks coming back the way they were because, you know, every, every airline has a, a long tail of new destinations that they're serving that will take time to build up profitability in an environment where, you know, cash is king, as, as it always is, but more so than ever, where balance sheets have been stressed. Airlines will be cautious about reintroducing flights. And there are certain parts of networks that I think, uh, you know, won't come back for some considerable time. So, you know, the industry will repair itself. It's incredibly resilient. It's demonstrated that, but it's got a lot of work to do. You're sounding measured at the moment. Um, I'm, getting I'm, used to being, I'm getting used to being more diplomatic in this role than, than I used to be. So right, absolutely. Talk, talk, talk to me again in a couple of weeks. That's what I was going to ask you. At what point are you going to have to raise the temperature in, in terms of, um, uh, of the bully pit that you now uh, occupy? Well, I'm raising it already, you know, as you would expect. Uh, so, yeah, I think IAT has done a great job, but I think we do have to become more forceful. I, I think people need to hear what's going on. I think there needs to be a strong voice asking questions and demanding answers. Uh, you know, and, and as I said, I don't have any issue with, with sensible restrictions being put in place. But I am going to challenge if those restrictions continue to be in place when the reason the, the restrictions were put in place have now been addressed and largely removed.